Um, okay, I, I think Michael's already outlined some of the areas that the OECD is going to be working on. He's right in saying that some of the batons over the G8 communique have now been passed to the OECD. So the first of those is to look at this issue called base erosion and profit shifting, uh, quaintly called BEPS. Um, and there is a BEPS action plan, which is uh, now in the public domain. It contains 15 action points um, and will look at potential changes to the international tax rules. Originally, the international tax rules um, seem to mainly deal with the issue around mitigating the potential for double taxation. Um, but in the process, as the years have gone by, have opened up opportunities for what we now call double non-taxation, so i.e. the incomes tax nowhere. Um, as Michael says, it was welcomed by the G8, although it wasn't published at that point. Um, it's now being published and was welcomed by the, and supported by the G20 finance yeah. ministers. Uh, and the way this is going to be taken forward is um, the G20 com countries that are not OECD members will be invited to take what the OECD called associate status, which essentially means they will be on an equal footing to OECD countries within the project, so they'll have the right to vote, etc. Uh, we're also keen to make sure that we also involve developing countries. It's one of the things we've been asked to do. Um, so we have various platforms by which we'll get input from um, OECD countries. We have um, a sorry, developing countries. We have an OECD tax and development program where we work closely on a bilateral basis with a whole range of developing countries. So we will use that process. Uh, we also have what we call a global relations program where we do week-long training events. So we'll use that as part of the process. And uh, we have global forums on transfer pricing, transparency and exchange of information and tax treaties which are, can be attended by non-OECD economies. Um, so we will also use those to get developing country input. Um, I, th I think Michael also mentioned uh, the issue of country by country reporting. Um, so we're going to be taking forward uh, the potential for creating a template for country by country reporting to tax administrations. This will not be country by country reporting into the public domain. Um, but that will look at things such as um, asking multinational or requiring multinational enterprises to report financial information to relevant tax administrations. Okay, so they will be tax administrations where the multinational has some sort of taxable presence. Um, and it will look at things like allocation of income, what the econo uh, economic activity is, and where taxes are paid among the countries in which the multinational has a taxable presence. Um, so, so that's um, being done under what's called Action 13 of um, the Action Plan. And actually the first steps on that have been taken within uh, the current draft white paper on transfer pricing documentation that's been prepared by WP6 and will go out for <coughs> public consultation in the next few weeks. Um, so you'll be able to look at that. And it's a public consultation not a business consultation, so anybody is allowed to make comments and send them in. Um, so if you have comments on that, you're welcome to send them to the OECD. Um, automatic exchange of information, also mentioned. Um, we've been asked by the G20 to develop one global standard, and one that is available and accessible to all countries. Um, so we're starting that work with um, Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa and Argentina to develop um, a standardized model which all countries can use. A and that's a three-tier approach. So the things we're going to look at is defining what financial information will be automatically exchanged, develop an operational platform which will help deal with issues such as confidentiality and potential misuse of data, and the establishment of what we call a multilateral legal platform. So we think that automatic exchange of information, it will be better to use a multilateral instrument. So we are going to consider whether it's possible to develop something to use the multilateral convention on mutual assistance uh, in tax matters. Um, we're keen to make sure that this works for developing countries. Um, so we're 
going to talk to developing countries to help them identify the technical assistance and capacity building that they need to effectively administer um, automatic exchange of information. And also to ensure they've got the, both the legal framework and the practical framework in place um, so that they ensure confidentiality of the information. Obviously, taxpayer confidentiality is going to be a key issue uh, within that standard. And then, so really those two issues cover having effective rules and having access to the information that as a tax administration you need in order to be able to effectively implement international tax rules. But you can have great rules and you can have all the information in the world. But if you have no capacity to use the information and effectively use the rules, you're not going to get very far as the tax administration. So we're also trying to help developing countries to build their capacity to deal particularly with international tax rules. Um, and uh, Michael mentioned tax inspectors without borders. Um, this is a new initiative. Um, it's just been approved by the two OECD committees, um, which are the Development Assistance Committee and the Committee for Fiscal Affairs. This falls under the Tax and Development Programme, which reports to both those committees. Um, and it's an initiative under which the OECD is going to create a very small secretariat to act as a dating agent, if you like, <laughs> um, between countries who have tax officials with expertise that other countries would like to be able to get access to. So you, we anticipate most of that will be developing countries asking for assistance from developed countries. Um, but we've already had the case of one country uh, coming to us and saying they think they've got some expertise that maybe some developed countries could use and they've got areas where they could use expertise from developed countries. So there may also be the opportunity for exchanges. And what we're going to do is we're in the pilot phase now um, and in that pilot phase we're going to develop some tools to help facilitate this process to deal with things like um, work permits, taxpayer confidentiality, can you work for a tax administration if you're a non-national, how do you deal with those sorts of issues. Um, and also to run some pilots, I've got one there, also to run some pilots <laughs> um, in some developing countries. Uh, and we're going to use the Tax and Development Programme uh, to identify those countries. And in fact, we've already got several identified, but our big challenge now <laughs> is to find experts that we can send to those countries. Mm. And it will be a mix of deployment. Some, some people will go for a month. Maybe in some cases it could be as long as two years. And the idea is it's a learning to do approach. So we will, te we will ask the tax officials to teach tax officials in the country how to do the work so that the person then leaves and the tax administration can do that work itself without needing um, any further assistance. Thank you. Okay. That, that was great. And I think we've already got one big idea for a new campaign, which is uh, dating agencies for tax officials. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's something that um, NGOs across the world can line up. Behind. Being an ex-tax official is probably a very good idea. <laughs> <laughs> if you've ever been to a party and said you're a tax inspector. <laughs> Although now I do get asked what's transfer pricing. <laughs> so in interesting people you must hang out with. <laughs> Christian aid supporters, probably. Yes. <laughs> Quite possibly. Christine. 